Good morning and welcome to uh, this fireside chat on the third day of the Zero Project Conference 2022. And I'm here today with uh, Alex Jensen from uh, Subreader. And uh, Subreader is an interesting product. It really has made me question some of my assumptions about what people need and when. And because of that, Alex, maybe you can just explain a little about what Subreader is and who you think benefits from it. Yeah, of course. So um, essentially what Subreader is that it's an app that you can download on your phone. And then whenever you watch a foreign language movie, then, you, uh, then you're able to get the subtitles read aloud in your local language. So say that you're watching in, uh, you're from Denmark and you're watching a, a Hollywood movie from the US. And typically the, the speech will be in English. And if you have dyslexia or if you're visually impaired or if you have other disabilities that makes it difficult to understand English or read, then through our app, you'll be able to get the subtitles read aloud in Danish. So you actually get a, a live dubbed version of the movie translated to your own language. Oh, that's, that's, that's really interesting. I think that idea that it's uh, particularly useful for foreign language movies, um, certainly across Europe and other parts of the world, that's a really important source of entertainment. So can you just give us another couple of examples of uh, people using the technology that you're aware of? Yeah, of course. So I think a great example is actually my, my little brother. Because uh, my little brother, he has dyslexia, so um, he has very difficult time reading. Um, and whenever we're watching a movie at home, uh, we're typically watching American movies or British movies. And that meant that uh, before I, uh, I started Subreader, my mom or my dad would actually have to read the subtitles aloud for my brother and also for me. And uh, I can easily read the subtitles. So for me, it's actually a bit annoying to listen to my mom. So uh, with Subreader, my brother actually just uses his phone and then he, he's wearing a pair of headphones and then he can get the movie read aloud in his own language. And I can watch the movie with my family without getting uh, distracted by my mom reading or translating the movie live. And I think it's, it's, it's really interesting that personal experience sort of set you off. And I just wonder, you know, at what point, what else made you realize that actually this wasn't just about your brother and your mom, that actually there was a wider need uh, for what you were thinking of? Yeah, it's, 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 also, it's always fun when you start something from a personal experience and it also makes it the impact a lot more um, impactful because when I see my brother and the happiness that he, he gets from the um, ability to watch movies by himself uh, and the independency he gets from it, it's, it's amazing. But, uh, but after I started it, we, we started getting a lot of media attention from uh, different uh, news outlets and we realized that a lot of people actually have dyslexia or are mm. visually impaired uh, because generally you say that 7 to 10% of any population suffers from dyslexia. So the, the, the need is huge, and what, what's going on is that a lot of people with dyslexia are kind of hiding it because it's been stigmatized for a long time, yeah. so they're not speaking out about it. And that's why a lot of people don't really know that this need has been here before, uh, because people are just watching the movie and then just not understanding it instead of uh, speaking out about the problem. And are you hoping to see this work with uh, things like streaming television as well as with movies in the cinema? Yeah, we actually already support both. Um, yeah. So the way that the platform works today is that we um, we have three different areas that you can use it in. You can use it in the cinema. So for all the blockbuster movies or whatever it is that's coming out, you can just download our app and then the cinema can buy the system from us and then all of their content is supported. And then we also support a bunch of uh, different streaming services like Netflix, Disney+, Plus, uh, Amazon Prime Video and, and such, where the whole content library on those services are actually supported on our platform. And then um, for education as well, we, uh, we have a bunch of different streaming services um, made for educational purposes that we, we support too. And, and just trying to imagine its use, so when uh, it reads back the subtitles, is it a single voice or does, is there more than one voice being used for different uh, people speaking on screen? Um, yeah, so right now it's, it's a single voice. Um, and the, the, the reason we've done that is because uh, a lot of people, when they have dyslexia or other things, they're used to these synthetic voices. Right. So it's kind of because what, that's what they're used to. So we don't want to change the experience of what they're used to using for, for other needs. Um, but you do have the option to choose between, between different uh, voices. And also you can adjust the speed of the voice as well. So you can kind of uh, personalize the experience. And, and what do you think then is, is the main innovations that you've brought into Subreader? Yeah, it's, it's a good question because um, uh, synthetic voices are not new. No. Um, but the thing is that what we've done is that we combine a bunch of different um, technologies into one, uh, which enables us to provide access to movies across different streaming services. And also, spoken subtitles is not a new thing as such. Uh, we've had it on our national television channel in Denmark for many years. But the problem is that you don't, you, you don't gather it in one platform. So right. essentially, you would need a bunch of different services. And it hasn't been personalized before either, 
which means that on, on DR, which we have in Denmark, it's the national TV channel, it will, the, the voice will come through the speakers of the TV, and then it's essentially the same as having your mom read the subtitles aloud, and <laughs> that doesn't really work out for everyone yeah. else. So essentially what we do is that we combine all these technologies and we put it down on a personal level, um, and then we have all the different platforms in one app, so you only have one entry into the whole accessibility world. I think that's, that's really... And, and how have the media companies responded to this technology? Have they expressed any concerns or have they been supportive? I would say generally they've been supportive. Uh, the thing about the media industry in general is that it's, it's quite a conservative in mm -hmm. industry, I would say. So um, what we see is that when we communicate with um, all the larger TV outlets and such, uh, they're very much looking towards what are everyone else doing. So someone yeah. needs to take the first step. Um, and that's kind of been the big struggle for us, at least, uh, kind of getting the, the bigger TV stations on board uh, and then hopefully getting the snowball rolling. So we've, we have, we've actually had to done a, a bunch of the work ourselves and kind of support them, even though they haven't um, yeah, supported us, I would say, uh, to kind of push this uh, technology forward. Yeah. And I can imagine that, you know, particularly during the pandemic, when cinemas weren't readily available to people, that actually having access easily and readily to streaming television, you'll use so many different channels nowadays, must have been really important to people who otherwise are very isolated from mm. sources of entertainment. Yeah, for sure. And uh, it's fun because uh, luckily we just managed to launch our uh, streaming service product right before COVID started. Um, and we, we saw a big shift from a bunch of our users going from the cinema and then straight to the streaming services as right. well. So even though one part of our business declined quite a lot due to the cinema yep. uh, closings, uh, we actually saw it, it ramp up on the private use uh, significantly after people yeah, started being home. And that really echoes and uh, that point you made about um, one system, so that whether or not you're watching at the cinema, whether you're watching on television, or a friend's television. Mm. Yeah. I can see how important that would be to have one system that you take with you regardless of location. Yeah, exactly. That, I think that's kind of the whole purpose about Subreader is that you can bring it anywhere. You can go to the cinema, you can go to your school, you can go to your friends, you can sit alone or you can sit with your family and it'll work anywhere. So you really are opening up quite a wide range of media and channels for media to people who maybe have found it really quite inaccessible or just challenging in the past. What would you say to governments and regulators um, should do to encourage this technology and its uptake? Yeah, I think uh, one thing we've experienced from Denmark at least is that it's very important that the that the governments and also the politicians in general support technologies like these by pushing them towards the national uh, subsidized television channels. Because as I said before, the media industry is quite conservative, which means that for us to actually get this technology implemented in a lot of the uh, privatized uh, TV channels, we need to have this implemented at the national mm. te uh, television channel first. Because what we, the argument we meet every time we're speaking to different TV channels is that, well, our national TV channel doesn't have this technology implemented. Why should we use money on it? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, politicians and the government should, uh, should push for accessibility um, on yeah, national taxpayers' money channels um, because that's kind of the, the state of the art and it should be state of the art within TV channels. And then a lot of the private channels are looking towards them and that helps us a lot in, in implementing it uh, on a wi wider range of, of different outlets. And do you think the uh, disabled people's organizations and the campaigning groups need to be more aware of this technology? Because they, they maybe need to make their governments and departments more aware of it for change to happen. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think what we see in, uh, in Denmark is that we have a lot of user panels uh, from different uh, disability groups. Um, unfortunately, uh, the dyslexic group is very underrepresented, right. uh, especially because the whole stigmatizing uh, about dyslexia has made it difficult for them to obtain power uh, or at least obtain a voice, um, where if we see um, the Organization for Visually Impaired People or Blind People, it's a very big organization in, in Denmark and also in other countries. So generally, we do see quite a big underrepresentation of dyslexia, um, which makes it difficult to bring technologies like these up um, when these user panels are made. Because, um, yeah, uh, the, uh, organizations for blind people are generally talking about other technologies first, I would say. Um, so that's kind of, I think it's re really important that you take into account all the different accessibility or disability types um, mm. and not, ne not necessarily based on members in the different organizations, because that's not always represented right. And I, I can certainly see um, a case that also as people age and perhaps it becomes difficult at times to follow the subtitles mm. just because your, your eyesight finds it difficult to focus on what's on action as well as the, what's being written at the bottom, that for an aging population, 
uh, how can I put this, people like me, um, there could be real benefits here as well. Yeah, for sure. We, we do have a, a bunch of users who are just uh, getting old and yeah. um, they haven't learned English that well in their youth or they maybe forgotten it. And as you say yourself, you start losing your focus. It gets more difficult to see the subtitles yeah. and such. And, and they enjoy using the service a lot as well. Yeah. And again, you know, if you're uh, low vision and you're putting the subtitles up so big so that you can see them that nobody else can work out what's going on in the film, uh, you're probably not going to be that popular with your family either. So this is a great way of getting around those little problems as well. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so where do you see this technology going in the future? What, what's next for you? So um, currently what we're working on is getting this technology implemented as wide as possible. Um, we want to provide one platform that provides accessibility no matter where you're watching or what you're watching. So that means uniform access to all the different streaming services, TV channels, cinemas, and such. But looking a bit longer term, we're, we hope hopefully we can implement it um, or we can advance the, the voices uh, so you get more... Imagine having Morgan Freeman in Danish. Um, so yep. it gets a lot more personalized and, and we can automate the whole dubbing part, which today is done by actors. Um, right. So essentially creating a lot better experience um, I would say that's the goal. And do you know what's been the most popular movie for your users recently? Uh, most recently, it's actually been Eternals from Disney Plus. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Funnily yeah. enough, uh, I've not and, seen and that one. So, you must give one. So, just just remind us, um, what do people need to use Subreader, and where do they get it from? Yeah, so it's actually very simple. You uh, you just download the app that's called Subreader on App Store. It also works on uh, Google Play Store, so mm -hmm. you can have it both for Android or for iOS. And then essentially you just need a pair of headphones and you create an account. And then um, you have access to all the movies. And we, um, we have a free tier uh, and you can also get a free trial. Uh, so there's a few different services that are free. In Denmark, it's the national TV channel. Right. Um, otherwise, you can uh, buy a, a subscription that's called Servido Plus, which is around six or seven euros a month. Okay. And then you get free access to, uh, to all the streaming services. Um, and there's also a map in the app that shows what cinemas support it. Uh, and it's always free to use in the cinema uh, because it's the cinemas who buy the system from us. Okay. So, any last thoughts? Anything else you would say to the audience to say why they should really be encouraging this and, and just to try it out for themselves? What would you say? I think um, a lot of people should give it a try to kind of experience how it is to be dyslexic. Also, if you don't have trouble reading subtitles, um, it's, it's, also, it's always good to kind of get, get used to the, the issues that other people have. Um, and I would say also... When you, when you try out Subreader, it's um, it can be a bit annoying in the beginning yeah. uh, because you need to, as, as you do with all technologies, you need to get used to how it works. Because um, whenever you watch a movie, when I watch a movie, I have kind of three mediums: I have the movie itself or the video, and I have the audio and I have the subtitles. When you start using Subreader in the beginning, you add another layer, you add another soundtrack, so you, you're kind of focusing on four different parts yeah. because you have the the video, two audio tracks, and the subtitles. But what you, what, you, what you see is that after 10 or 20 minutes, you actually start looking away from the subtitles. So even if you don't have dyslexia and you're just quite a slow reader, you will all of a sudden start watching a lot more of the movie than you might have before because you don't focus on the subtitles and you don't spend that time uh, okay. looking at the bottom of the screen. Um, but you can yeah, just focus on the movie itself. I, I, think, I think it's an amazing innovation. I, I used to live in the Middle East. And you go to the cinema, there were often two or even three sets of subtitles yeah. on the screen all at the same time. There wasn't a lot of film left to watch. <laughs> so I, I want to really congratulate you. I think what you've done is found a, a really interesting niche problem and a great solution. So I want to thank you on behalf of everyone for what you've done. And also to thank your mum for annoying you so much <laughs> in the way she read out the subtitles that you really had to do something to stop that happening. Exactly. I imagine having your mum for three hours watching Lord of the Rings in the background. <laughs> yeah, yeah. okay, that's, that, that would be my worst nightmare. <laughs> Ale Alexander, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thanks.